welcome to the stunning Elk River. With perfect weather in store, we're up early and trekking a little south to soak up some time off the hustle and bustle grid. In store, a two day float consisting of pristine scenic views, a lot of fishing, primitive camping, quality bonding time, and the best part, no cell service. If you love trips like this, smash that like and subscribe button. Want further details so that you can enjoy this trip in person? Well then stay tuned. All right, so we made it. This is the Ferris Creek uh, put-in canoe day use area. You can see the parking lot, nice parking lot. No camping though, like I said, day use only. And then you walk down, so we're waiting for some people to unload. This is where you go down, nice little ramp to back your truck down, unload all your gear and pull back out. So this is Ferris Landing. Walter and Eli just got here, 45 minutes late, those guys. I have my canoe packed. Fishing stuff in the back, that cooler is coming out. Drinks cooler, drone, water, dry bag. Walter's cooler is going in the middle. This water is chilly. Chilly. I mean, look, man. Beautiful. Just like that, we're off. This section of the Elk flows out of Tim's Ford Dam. Due to the lake's extreme depth, the water in the river is brisk and in the mid 50 degree range, allowing for quality trout and smallmouth fishing. All right, we just put on, Walter's already catching trees. We put on at Ferris Bridge. We're taken out at Shiloh. So we actually paddled up just a little bit. Now we're gonna float down the rest of the day. We have the whole day. I don't know, what time is it guys? 9.55. Eli lost one. At the boat doesn't count though, it has to be on the boat. <laughs> Life is good. Eli and Walt eat up the fly fishing, while I more so uh, try to critique my skills, and then switch to my beloved ultralight. Within no time, we have a few fish in the boat, and this is already proving to be a fantastic weekend. Alright, hey, second. <laughs> second, second fish of the day. It's not on the fly, not on the uh, fly rod, but on the uh, ultralight with a rooster tail. Not bad. Nice float. How do you like? How do you like my doggy stick? <laughs> All right, we're waiting on Walt as usual. Eli's waiting. I'm gonna go check out this back little creek and throw this little uh, rooster tail. Look at this. Oh, look at this. So I walked back there already. We're here, ready. The moose and fry. And if you can see him, it's a little bit of deeper gully. So my goal, cast right over that log in the middle, bring it right down through the middle uh, and see if something hit. Maybe not a trout, but yeah, something. Hopefully. Hit me on the mind. I don't know what to know yet. I've tried some time. And I'm dying to tell you. Oh, hit me on the mind. I don't know what to know yet. I've realized. Nice. You know the good thing? I got that on camera. Look, if you don't know or don't like the outdoors, 
reasons to be outdoors. Oh, are we gonna paddle up? Oh yeah. As the saying goes, always expect the unexpected. We come around a quick bend in the river, and travesty hits. Like a rookie, I had the GoPro standing on the cooler, completely unsecured, and without any flotation device, she sank like a rock. We spend the next 30 or 40 minutes searching for it, but with the swift current and murky water, she would now be at the river's mercy for the unforeseen future. I reluctantly call off the search and we forge on downriver. Now, if you haven't figured it out already, I did eventually recover the GoPro, hence the only reason I have this footage. Curious as to how I recovered it? Check out the link to the search and recovery video in the description below. For now though, let's continue on. We spend the rest of the day drifting at the river's pace, loving life. We catch several more fish and meet a few other folks on the same mission, but other than that, it's just us and the wildlife. As the sun creeps in on the horizon, we set up camp on a small island and settle into the smell of campfire and steak. As night takes over, we're joined by a hooting owl, chirping crickets, and the general rustling of other critters. Day two, we're back in the water. No GoPro though. This is the view. Quiet. Nobody but us. Not a soul but us. I'm about to show you guys some lazy man fishing. This is it. So we're going down some rapids. Just a nice bit of current. And all I have is the crawfish on. He's out a little bit. And you just let it drag. I am what, I believe three for three is what I am doing it this way. So as soon as you sort of get out of the currents into some of these backwash areas, usually where the boards are waiting. Oh, hold on. Been catching these guys all day. Thank you, buddy. We are having a blast. Day two, we've been on this river, yeah, since yesterday morning, about what, I think eight, 8.30, 8.30 probably, and We've caught a good bit. Some trout, some a small mouth, uh, one crappie. Uh, it's been a good weekend. Other than I lost my GoPro. Dumb on my part for putting it on the cooler. Wasn't expecting rapids. It was nice and smooth like this. So I'll be back to probably with some goggles and dive down and see it. Because it's black, so it blends right in is the problem maybe a business idea right or GoPro hey why do you make the things black so they blend in when you drop them or lose them um, what are we doing I'm gonna try and make a video out this out of this with some of the drone footage probably should have been taking more footage with my phone um, but I didn't so it is what it is uh, of course it's really hard to get action shots with the fishing and stuff with the camera uh, with the phone camera or at least holding it by yourself, so don't have a tripod anymore since that went in too. Um, but it's a blast. I just caught a uh, big rainbow, probably 12 inches or maybe slightly over. Um, I'm not a, uh, I'm a rookie trout fisherman, so I don't know if that's big, but I feel like it's big compared to some of the other trout, rainbow trout that I've caught. Um, very nice rainbow, any for like all hick and back. And it was on the coral fish. Uh, so what are we doing? So we put in, at Ferris Bridge uh, put in and then we're taking out at Shiloh Bid Bridge I'll put those on the map uh, show you guys um, and then put a link in the description but yeah I mean this has absolutely been a beautiful 
float. Yeah, we camped last night. Uh, I mean, the <laughs> river doesn't get much prettier than this. I'm sorry. Uh, just doesn't. It absolutely does not. I would highly recommend this route. Uh, I'll put a link in the description to our put in, put out, um, as well as a map for this river that someone else kindly created on Google Maps. So thank you, man. Uh, I highly recommend it. Get out here and enjoy um, fish and remember to take care of it. Uh, for now, I'm gonna catch up to Rob, not Rob, I'm gonna catch up to Walt and Eli. We don't think too much longer that, uh, that we have left on the river. Um, but I'm going to fish a little bit more. But anyway, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope I can make at least somewhat of a decent video for you guys to see this river so I can share it and people can come out and enjoy it and take care of it uh, the way I hope. Anyway, that is it for now. We'll see you guys. Just like that, we are done. And it literally started raining. The second, we're packed. And we're rolling out. Until next time, Built to Venture. Well, out. A couple quick reminders. If you liked the video, hit that like button. If you want to see more, hit the subscribe button. Trip details are in the description below. There's a link to the starting point and the takeout, uh, as well as the general map that someone kindly created. Now, we put in at Ferris Creek. We took out a Shiloh Bridge. From my best estimations, it's about 12 miles. We spent two days doing it. We camped overnight at a uh, on an island. You could easily float it in one day if you wanted to. We went at the river's pace. Uh, now you would have to paddle quite a bit if you did do it in one day, but it is doable. Keep in mind, if you do camp yourself, all the shorelines are private property. Now there's areas where the owners have put no trespassing, no camping, but there's also a lot of areas that no one's put anything. If you wanna really be safe, stay on the islands, that's sort of no man's land. If you do camp on someone's private property that doesn't have trespassing signs, please remember to leave the place better than you found it. I honestly don't think a lot of these people mind people enjoying the nature around them. It's just the people that ruin it, dumping trash and leaving all their litter and mess behind that drives the property owners and everybody else to say no more. So again, my name is Cullum. I hope you guys enjoy this video. I hope I was able to provide some value to you. Uh, by inspiring you and providing a little bit of insight into how to go and do this trip by yourself. For now, that is me, out.